It's an issue that affects every single Michigan resident, not just the approximately 90 harbor communities that are along the Great Lakes that some of us, I guess all of us represent. Michigan's ports, harbors, and waterways must be ad adequately and consistently maintained to provide long-term protection of both natural resources and related economic activity. We believe Michigan lacks the statutory authority and funding options to fully meet this goal. I support the governor's commitment to making our ports, harbors, and waterways accessible to recreational and commercial traffic, yet there's much more that needs to be done to make them truly accessible in the future. Michigan residents and our business community depend on the long-term assurance that our waters will remain open for the public. To meet this commitment, we have developed a detailed five-point plan that complements the governor's budget proposal with both short and long-term dedicated funds, key statutory fixes to ensure a long-term dedicated funding source, development of a long-term strategy that provides a real solution to our annual struggles with dredging needs and provides more tools for local financing of dredging activities and urges a new Great Lakes Basin plan for promotion of the Great Lakes. One of the significant reasons why this is important my mind, though, is the economic development factor that, it, that exists in Michigan. You know, each one of those convenience store sales, each one of those gasoline sales for marine fuel and so forth, spin off a significant amount of sales tax dollars into our economy. Those sales tax dollars relate to what? They relate to constitutional requirements and education funding. They equate, equate to constitutional requirements and in, in funding our revenue sharing that goes to police and fire and all those things that make our community strong through our local municipalities. So if we see a complete shutdown of the boating economy in the state of Michigan, we will see a significant loss in revenue to the state of Michigan that spins off millions and millions of dollars. Out of the Port of St. Joseph alone, it's a $20 million impact on an annual basis, including the commercial side of it. Uh, I'll add one more point. We should not absolve the federal government of their responsibility also. There are billions of dollars in the trust fund in Washington designed for port maintenance. Uh, I know that Representative Upton as well as Senator Levin have both worked very hard in the House and Senate to ensure that those dollars come back to Michigan to dredge our harbors and ensure that those commercial ports remain open, thereby decreasing our costs. I represent 13 of the 15 counties in the Upper Peninsula and I think for me it's, it's a double-edged sword. We've got the industrial side of things that we need our ports and we've got the recreational side of it. A lot of our smaller communities, their ports are the lifeblood of their community. Uh, and if we can't get boats in and out of them, we're, we're in trouble. Those, those communities, their economies in trouble. But the statewide issue, I, I guess I, I got a pretty good example and I think it's the uh, iron ore freighters. And recently I did a tour of the Severstall steel mill and realized that the entire iron ore pellets that they use to build this, make the steel they make comes out of the Empire and the Tilden Mines up in the Upper Peninsula in my district. And so when those uh, ore freighters can't get out of those harbors or they have to load uh, three quarters of a load versus a full load, uh, it just drives costs up. And at some point we could really get into trouble here um, with our total economy because it's all interconnected. And by the way, Severstall Steel makes steel for Ford Motor Company. And almost every F-150 Ford you see going down the road comes from the iron ore uh, pits up in the Upper Peninsula, and that's how we're interconnected. And so when the ore freighters get hurt, everybody gets hurt. And so that's why I believe these, these, uh, the port issues we're faced with are that big of an issue because it's so tied and interconnected to our, our economy here in the state of Michigan. So I want to see uh, uh, us moving forward. I don't want to just do a press conference and you folks walk away and report on what we said and then nothing happens. My hope is that we stick together and make something happen regardless of what the federal government does. I um, haven't been real impressed with their actions lately, so I think it's great that Michigan's being proactive and moving forward. The other thing that we're concerned about and we're gonna be overseeing and watching as legislators is the fact that a lot of these ports have been dredged through the years multiple times. So it shouldn't be a large red tape fiasco to get a permit to dredge, dredge a port. Um, if this is an emergency, and I believe it is, um, we should see some streamlining there. We have had discussions with uh, the director of the DEQ. Uh, he has been proactive with us, and so you'll see some work coming there too. Um, there's no reason we can't do that. I believe we can get that done. So that's uh, my perspective from the Upper Peninsula.